Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We have with us our very second guest who is also making the paper just like Bodge. But this time around, she's doing it from something that was not her original calling. Now, from being a lawyer, she's found her way to being one of Nigeria's pioneer and biggest event planners. She's the CEO of Zafai Events, and her name is Funke Bokna Obruzi. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so much for being here today. You're welcome. It's a real pleasure. <laughs> it's an Thank honor you. to have you. Like, this interview has been happening for like the past two years, and finally, yes. we've caught you on our set. Yes. So thank Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. So um, you started, I mentioned earlier how your journey started from being a lawyer to being an event planner. My well, lawyer senior, actually. Yes, yes. We've, we've <laughs> dropped our wig and gown. We've dumped it somewhere and pursued other careers. Was this something that you knew you were going to do eventually or did you stumble into it? Wow. I would say I stumbled into event planning and um, just because I wasn't satisfied with where I was. So I, when I practiced law or when I studied law, I knew I wanted more, I, I, but I didn't know what. So um, just from the passion, the desire, and just the, the love of just helping my friends organize a few of the events, that's how I got into event planning. Amazing. Now, we know that here in Nigeria, we love events. Events is literally our weekends. In fact, events is our weekdays as well. Anything to do with OM by Rocks, and we are all there. What are the biggest challenges that you face as an events planner when it comes to planning Nigerian weddings in particular? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I love Nigerian weddings. I think that... Our culture is so vibrant and we are just fun loving. Yeah. But we also have some of our negativity. So there's some things that we don't do well. We're very, we're bad with African time. So our events don't start on time. The people never tell you the truth about the number of guests. People don't oh, arrest VP. Yeah, people, then people don't arrest VP. So we have an event, they tell you, I think it's 400 people. And then on the day, maybe it'll be 700 people. And they're like, oh, well, you know, we're Nigerians. You know, just manage it. I'm like, no. No, no. managing. <laughs> you know, so things like that. You know, we're very big on uh, protocol. We're very big on, you know, you must call my name. Uh, you want everybody wants to come in with their security guards. Everybody. So all those things sometimes make our weddings a bit, uh, our events a bit rowdy. You know, but when you remove all that, and you, uh, uh, when you remove all that, our events are usually very nice. Very interesting. I, I, I definitely, I'm not, okay, I, I hate to say this, but I'm not really a fan of weddings per se, but I Me would too. definitely pick Nigerian weddings over any other wedding because oh, yeah. we yes. know how to turn up in a real party. Yes. Now let's talk about um, you and your staff. Now you have a couple of people as well that work under you. Yes. How are you able to manage all that you do? How are you able to strike a balance between, we see you on social media, you're a very, very social, warm, playful person, but also in the same breath, you have to be a boss to a lot of the people that are working under you. So how are you able to strike a balance between your personality as a playful and warm person and then as the boss? Okay, so, well, I have split personalities, so I would say. So really, it's about um, balance, priorities, and it's about the vision. So where is the organization going? Where are you taking it to? And so for the office, I have a fantastic team. I have a large team. And this team, from the from balancing their work, so ensuring that they deliver. So there's a lot of delegation, there's a lot of structure. There's process in place, so it's not just about myself, it's about, there's, we have our HR department, our admin department, the events department, so it's actually quite huge. But the key thing is the process, the structure, the knowledge is not in, in one person's hand, and then of course the delegation and the supervision. So they're just constant, and then of course empowering the team. The key thing is empowering them. So yes, I'm a very tough boss, I'm not one of the um, I'm not one of the easiest bosses. So at events, because I take it very seriously, for me, it's about excellence. So anything less than excellence, I will not, we will not accept it. And that's good because we need to have high standards. It's the only way in which we can ensure that everything we're putting into something is actually going to come back one way or another. Yes. Now, can you share three tips with us on planning a successful event? Three tips. The first tip I will tell anyone is personalizing your event. What is the most important thing to you? Don't think about what is important to people. What is important to you? That is one of the first things. Understand that. Or you need to just understand that. That was one of the first things that I would say. The second one I would say is that be realistic. Be realistic with your budget. A lot of people are not realistic. A lot of people want the Kate Middleton, Royal the Meghan kind of wedding, but they're just going to kind of like pay. <laughs> you know, yeah. So just be realistic, you know. Be real. Cut your coat according to your size. That's the second tip. The third one I, I would say is that, especially when it comes to weddings, let it be about the couple, let it be about family, let it be about the things that matter to you most. And then when it comes to other types of events, just ensure that you've put all the right parameters in place. Don't let the entertainment overpower the food. Don't let the drinks overpower the 
the MC, don't let the guest, don't let, you know, just strike the right balance, prioritize. What is the most important thing? So those, those are the things. I think I said four things. But yeah. Very <laughs> fantastic tips you've given us in there. But give us an insight into the process of planning your wedding. Now, I'm asking this because I currently have a friend getting married in August. Okay. And she complained to me that her wedding planner says, oh, don't worry, we can plan your wedding in one month. And I said, last I checked, I've never seen a wedding in Nigeria, a large wedding, being mm. planned in one month. Mm. How possible is it? So on, a, on the average, how long does it take to plan a wedding, a good wedding in Nigeria? And budget, what is the average budget? Because we find that a lot of young boys are afraid of getting married. <laughs> because they say the money is too Don't much. be afraid, please. Don't be afraid. <laughs> so give us an idea. Okay. So first of all, you can plan a wedding. It depends on if you have money and you have the right resources and the right vendors. You can plan a wedding even in two weeks if you want to. Honestly, I honestly. So, <laughs> but it just depends that sometimes with that, you may not be able to get what you want. So you may not be able to get the right hall. You may not be able to get the right wedding dress. You may not be able to get the right vendors that you probably would have wanted if you had booked well in advance. So sometimes I always advise people, if you know that you want a specific type of wedding, it's always very important that you book well in advance for anything you want. So you can plan a wedding, even the cake. You can get someone that can bake you a cake. If it's not a fruit cake that, you know, maybe you're going to put like alcohol in it or anything, they can bake a cake for you in three days really that's it but it's about having the right <laughs> resources yeah. so you can plan a wedding now budget budget is very relative so i would say to anyone that don't compare your wedding to the next person you can have the wedding of your own dreams by creating the budget that you want so be realistic with the budget you don't need to have if for example Food is a priority for you. Then make food a priority. Then don't let your dress be the most expensive thing. If makeup is not a priority for you, then drop it. If your wedding cake, you can want to spend a certain amount on it. Nobody, you see, what happens is everybody wants to their wedding to outshine the next person's wedding. But they realize that after your wedding, there's another wedding. Mm -hmm. There's another wedding. And it's everybody's dream day, yes. But your budget can actually help you, you know. And, you know, okay, for example, I'll tell someone, I said, for example, you're expecting 2,000 guests at your wedding. And you tell me that the, you want to spend the same amount of money as someone that is expecting 300 guests. It's not possible. Because the guest count alone, when you multiply it with all the things that you need to do, it's going to make it large. So it depends on the number of guests you're expecting. It depends on the type of wedding you want to have. All those things determine the budget of your wedding. So I always tell anybody, you can have the wedding of your dreams. You can have your dream wedding. You can have your, the wedding that is for your own cost. So just keep it intimate, small if you need to. Keep it large if you need to. But it just depends on you. Now, we also know that here in Nigeria, there's so many challenges that we face when it comes to weddings and other events and so many things that can literally lead to everything going wrong. For example, timing is an issue yes. and so many other things. What tips do you give yourself as an events planner to say, regardless of these things, I'm going to ensure that the event actually goes to plan? <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing is to realize that anything can go wrong. I have a plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, if possible. So we're dealing with power issues. We're dealing with vendors. We're dealing with traffic. We're dealing with um, venues. You know, we're dealing with, we, we, we don't have a lot of regulation, now, which is what we're trying to organize. We are, I'm part of an association, um, a of event planners, APWEM, and also Alia, about two associations of where we are trying to put regulations into this industry. We're doing a lot of things that are going to make people realize that we need to do things better. So I, we always think to ourselves that, you know what, it's about crisis management. How do you manage crisis? That is one of the skills an event planner must have. You must learn how to manage crisis. So even if you want to go and cry in one corner, which we've done several times. But come back and manage the crisis. What do you need to do? What should you have done? What's the plan? Oh, this, it looks like there are many people at this event. What should you do next? Okay, do you know, just manage. It's about yeah. ability to manage the crisis. So those are the things that we tell ourselves. And we always have to tell ourselves, you need to be calm. Emotional intelligence. Be calm. Oh, ah, you have to be very calm. Yeah. Because if you're not calm, you can't panic the couple, you can't panic your clients. How are you able to now manage your emotions? Because we find uh, that a lot of people don't know how to manage their emotions when they're in, when they're upset. <laughs> and you have very dramatic clients. I'm sure there are some couples <laughs> that would, you know, raise the whole roof in the event of a, of a crisis. How are you able to manage your emotions in such a way that the couple is probably insulting you and you're having to keep your calm? Wow. You see, it takes a lot of um, skills. It takes a lot of diplomatic skills. It takes a lot of emotional intelligence. When early on in my career, I, I was always very friendly. But, you know, a lot of times I realized that people also were, I don't want to say, say taking the piss, maybe. You know, so you also have to learn how to put people in their place. Let them understand that you are the professional. 
They need to listen to you. Some things can happen. Some things may go wrong. It may not be your fault. It could even be their fault. But it's about reassuring them, letting them understand that because you know what you are doing. I've been doing this for over 14 years. I mean, we're about 14, 15 years now. So you should understand that there's a, there's a wealth of experience that I bring to the table. So you know what? You just need to calm down. Just need to calm down. There's no need to be over dramatic. Just calm down. Things will work yeah. out. 14, 15 Things, years. Does it get yes. easier? No. <laughs> no way. It doesn't get easier. But it gets... You, you want to do this because you've seen it all. So I've seen it all. I've, I mean, from the families that don't like each other to the ones that love each other, from the couple that love, you know, they, I've seen it all. So the key thing is to say, you know what? Every event is different. There's no client that is the same. There's no client that, you treat each client differently. Let them feel like they're the most special person to you. Because you know what? For any wedding or for any event, it's their first time. You've been doing it for over 14 years. This is their own first event. So how do you ensure that they feel that way when you, so it's about trust? It's about encouragement. It's about making them feel special. You know, all those things put in, in place. Now, we know that weddings seem to be your forte, but you yes. do all sorts of events. Yes. You know, give us an insight into all sorts of events, that other so, kind of events. Yes, so, of course, weddings. We love weddings. I talk about weddings a lot because I just love weddings. It's just so emotional. I cry a lot at weddings. Oh. So, yeah, that's why. <laughs> but we, we plan a lot of events. We do corporate events. We do social events. We plan a lot of lifestyle events, destination events. So, from birthdays, you know, all kinds of events all over Nigeria and Africa and even all over, you know, Europe and the um, U.S. So, we plan a lot of different types of events. I want, you have an event coming up. Tell us about it. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this event that is happening. Oh my God. So this event is happening on Sunday. It's called Rock in the Park. It's a family fun day and it's also where we are going to have fantastic artists, you know, and then there's a lot of to eat and drink and it's a way of networking and people coming together, you know, so yeah, that's the event. And it's, it's going to be amazing on Sunday. I'm so excited what about it. It's at 2 o'clock. It starts at 2 o'clock and it ends at 10. So 2 o'clock is like a picnic in the park. You know, just come. Come with your blankets. Come with your mats. And then have loads of food, loads of drinks. And then have all the artists on display singing, a lot of music, a lot of networking, a lot of connection, a lot of bonding. And just fun. So it's fun I think fun that's a food. fantastic way to spend your Sunday afternoon. Yes. And now I'm even thinking you... of changing my weekend plans. Yes, you need to come. <laughs> change it. Yes, we should go together. And we know that because you're known for excellence, we expect to see a lot of excellence. That is happening Thank at Muriel Kola as well. Yes, at Muriel Kola Park right. on Sunday. Yes. All right. For people who want more information about the work that you do, yeah. where can they find out more information? So for anyone that is trying to see this is what we do, you can go to our Instagram page or our website, Zafar Event. Our name on Instagram is Zafai underscore event and um, one of our social media handles is Zafai event. And then, of course, on our um, social media and our website is Zafai event. And then, of course, my personal page, Funke Bokno, on all social media handles. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. We look so forward much. to seeing you on Sunday at yes. Rock in the Park. Yes. And uh, because I'm a rock star, like I'm a presenter by day, lawyer by training, where yes. tonight I'm a, definitely a rock star. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.